Should you pick the Summit Pro LS cam or the Big Nasty cam? Uh, by the way, it depends on what intake you run. Hello everybody, I'm Robert Trollner, and as always, welcome to the channel. I'm at West Tech Performance, and today we're testing two cams from Summit Racing. We have a 5.3 liter up on the dyno, and today we're testing the Big Nasty cam, which actually is neither big nor nasty. In fact, it's quite torquey, but we are testing something even bigger, so let's check it out. Okay guys, we're gonna run a couple of different Summit cam shafts, some Pro, Summit Pro LS cam shafts, including their big nasty, but before we do that, we gotta get the motor up on the dyno and in running condition, so let's get going. Because we're gonna be performing cam shafts, I have finally <laughs> stepped up to a remote Mazir pump. There you can see down there, rather than having it on the, the block, and we've got these standoffs from the guys at Mazir. All we have to do is hook up the electric pump, hook these up, and that way I won't have to remove the pump when we go ahead and remove the damper and the front cover and perform the cam swap. So we'll get this thing all hooked up. That way we have our water pump. And also, I don't have to remove this, and one of the things that I hate more than everything else when I'm doing cam swap is I don't like that the water gets everywhere, so now, I don't have to worry okay, about guys, it. You can see we got our Holly low ram on here, got the fuel rails, got our 80 pound injectors here. Got everything set up. Now I need to put the lid on the high ram, so let's pop that on and get ready. The guys from Summit Racing originally supplied a set of valve car assists that we were going to run and they look good. They're all full ability goodness and everything. I'll go ahead and show you a photo here. They should work well. The problem is there's no provision to mount the coils. They're designed for a remote coil mount, which we don't run here on the engine dyno. So I talked to the guys at Brian Tuman Racing. They sent out a set of valve covers with the coil brackets on it. So we'll run those for this test. So we gotta get the fuel line hooked up, including this is a crossover line for the two rails. What we'll do is feed the back of the rail and the fuel will come in here, loop across, go to this side, and then we've just got it deadheaded back here. So we'll get our fuel line started. This is just a piece that Westac had laying around. Works as a crossover for this. I got run under the throttle body just so it's not in the way of any of the airflow. And we're good. Now we'll take this line and hook it from the regulator on the dyno up to this far fuel rail. Now we're ready for the exhaust, so I'll grab a set of inch and seven eighths headers, and I like to run collector extensions and mufflers. There's no reason to have this thing be terribly loud, and I found out that this particular combination actually works fairly well. This motor made a lot of power with these particular headers and that collector extension and Magnaflow mufflers. Okay, let's pop on the headers. Time to pop in some plugs. We got all our plugs in, we got our plug wires. <laughs> Look. All right, well, we got everything plumbed, we got fuel, we got oil, we got water. Let's see if it starts.
Jim got our truck manifold on. As you can see, I have replaced the Holly low ramp with the truck manifold. We're going to run it with the Summit camshaft and find out how well it works with the truck manifold. More realistic than the really short runner kind of deal. And then we'll, put, we'll run this 8711 cam and then we'll put in the big nasty. Let's start it up. Yeah. Okay guys, we've run the 8711 cam with the truck manifold. Now we're going to swap the cams out and install the big nasty. Swap till you drop. The high speed swap makes it look so easy. Okay, so we got the big nasty cam installed, the motor's all back together, ready to go. Let's go in the control room, get it started up, get it warmed up. Big nasty cam. Okay guys, we're gonna go in the order of the cams as I tested them. These were from Summit Racing. The first one is the 8711R1. This camshaft offered 625-605 lift split, a 234-238 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. Our test motor was the 5.3 liter L33, the aluminum motor. It had the uh, BTR improved trick flow as cast 220 heads. They were no longer as cast. The guys from Bright Chili Racing did a bunch of porting. They also did milling on them, mill 30,000s. We had the Holly low ram, so a short runner intake manifold run on it. 102 millimeter fast throttle body. Inch and seven eighths headers with collector extensions and mufflers. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. We had the Mazir remote electric water pump, as I've indicated in the video. And this is very important because this camshaft, pretty big, pretty good sized camshaft for a 5.3 liter, and it was teamed with a short runner manifold, so it revved out pretty far. In fact, we ran it all the way out to 7,600 RPM, and this thing made good power. I mean, if you take a look at the peak here, we're talking 533 horsepower, so pretty good peak power number. Peak torque checked in at 413 foot-pounds of torque, but made peak torque all the way out at 6,000. So very high RPM manifold. And what I wanted to show you is basically, basically both ends of this thing. So if you were to run this big camshaft from Summit Racing with a short runner intake manifold, a BTR, uh, Trinity or Equalizer or this low ram Texas Speed has their own version also. So on these short runner manifolds, it will make peak power way out at a high engine speed and makes and, and capable obviously of making good power even on our stock bottom N53 with those very very good ported. Uh, trick flow 220 heads. But what happens if we run some kind of other manifold with it? Well, I also ran this thing with a truck manifold because the big nasty cam, <laughs> I ran a smaller version of that. We're going to take a look at it. Probably more appropriate for the truck manifold. But let's take a look first at what happens when I ran the truck manifold with this 8711 camshaft and you guys can get an idea. So with the truck manifold, peak power jumped down to 489 horsepower. Peak torque was up quite a bit, 432 foot-pounds. My guard dogs, you can hear them in the background, <laughs> are on point barking at everything that walks by. But you can see the truck manifold, long runner truck manifold, made more power than the short runner manifold all the way up to 6,200 RPM. So if you're running in that range, even with this bigger cam, 
you'd be better off, I think, with a longer runner manifold. And for those guys that want to ask, if you were to put a Trailblazer SS or even a fast manifold, this combination would be even better because it would make more power, even up to 6,500, maybe as much as 7,000 compared to the short runner manifold. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we ran the smaller <laughs> big nasty cam. Okay, guys, I just got done showing you either, depending on your perspective, please let me know in the comments, <laughs> the right cam with the wrong manifold or the right manifold with the wrong cam, you know, either direction. Now we're going to show you the right cam with the right manifold or maybe the wrong cam with the wrong manifold. You guys let me know in the comments. But this was our 5.3 liter equipped with the Summit 8711 R1 camshaft. That was a pretty good size cam, 625, 605 a 234, 238, and 114. Now we're going to show you what happened when we put one of the big nasty series camshafts in, but it's a smaller version and it's probably more at home with this long runner truck manifold. So this smaller cam was a 550 lift, both intake and exhaust, a 218, 230 at 50, but a tight, for all you tight LSA guys, here you go, 105 plus 3 on the LSA, and here's what happened when we installed that camshaft into our TFS headed 5.3. You can see it made less peak power, which we would expect of a 218 camshaft, but it made a lot more torque. Also what we would expect of a 218 camshaft, even one with a 105 degree lobe separation, separation angle. But take a look at the torque gains down at 3000 and lower. Lots of power. In fact, this smaller cam made more power than the bigger cam all the way up to... 5,400 RPM. So if you're looking for the low speed torque kind of thing, you know, you want all the drivability, maybe for a truck application or something like that. This is obviously a much better choice than the bigger camshaft. You can see the gains down here. In fact, to give you an idea what the peak power was, this thing made 459 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 439. Did we get... 430, no, 439 foot pounds of torque. You can see down here 3,000 or even below that at 2,800 RPM. We had 328 foot pounds for the bigger cam and 379 foot pounds for the smaller cam. So it just goes to show you, you got to pick the right cam. I'm Richard Herbler. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing, and for the guys that are wondering, this camshaft would be a good 50-60 horsepower over a stock cam on this combo.